But Miley had a different childhood experience. When I was 13 years old, I was filming Hannah Montana. So I was working. I know Adam and everyone else will have all these stories like, oh, I was in school, I was in whatever, I was working. Disney is a network that many kids dream to be a part of, but there are some former Disney stars who have had their time on Disney and tried to warn us about their negative experience. Today on Way on the Screen, we are checking out these 10 celebrities who did try to warn us. I'm your host for this one, Josh Bedard. Thanks for coming back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. Make sure you guys leave a like on this video because it really helps us out, and also subscribe so that you don't miss more. Starting off our countdown is Miley Cyrus. She has talked about her Disney experience on more than one occasion, revealing the struggles she faced after taking on the epic role of Hannah Montana. Throughout her career, Miley has shared that she struggled with an eating disorder as a young girl and that she felt wearing makeup and a wig every day was the definition of what it meant to be a pop star. It was difficult for her to really find herself as Miley because the world knew her as Hannah Montana. Her mom is still her manager to this day, and she also admitted that Disney was not not always the best to work for. She said she started understanding how many people were taking advantage of her young daughter and revealed that Miley was grossly, her quote, underpaid. It even came to light that Miley didn't even own her name during that time. Since her character outside of Hannah Montana was actually Miley Stewart on the show, they actually had rights to her name, Miley. Many reasons led up to her decision to quit in 2010, and even though she had a tough experience as a kid, she recently said she would totally do a reboot. So. But maybe now it's different because she's an adult, she can handle the Disney network. Coming up next, number nine is Joe Jonas. He was just one of the brothers from the boy band, the Jonas Brothers, but he took on the lead role in the Disney movies, Camp Rock. In recent years, Joe wrote a piece for Vulture, which highlighted his time at Disney. In the piece, he revealed that he and his brothers always had to sugarcoat their music and lives to maintain their innocent Disney persona. He said their lyrics actually had to be reviewed and approved by the Disney team, and if anything was too sexual or provoking, then they were told to change it. That was actually one of the main reasons that they decided to quit. He also said that Disney controlled their creativity too much, and he started to feel like one of their puppets. For any young child star wanting a music career outside of Disney, this would have been a good warning for them. Outside of the personality image that they had to maintain, he also hated the fact that he had to shave every single day to play a role that was much younger than he was in real life. That would suck as a man. Moving on to number eight, we have Hilary Duff. There have been a lot of conflicting stories about what exactly led to her decision to leave Disney and her lead role as Lizzie McGuire. But fans got some kind of confirmation back in 2003 when her mom did an interview with Entertainment Weekly and claimed it had to do with her paycheck. Susan Duff claimed that Disney was trying to bully her daughter into accepting whatever offer they wanted to make for a sequel to the Lizzie McGuire movie. Her mom said that Hillary ended up walking away from the sequel, but then Disney walked away from the whole franchise. Franchise. Hillary also spoke about it and said that it really had an effect on her mental health, which is why she chose to bow out for a while. She said, I was just making records and touring and making movies and then doing it all over again. By the end of it, I was like, I'm done. I don't enjoy this anymore. I'm not who I want to be. So I guess Disney is not paying their stars enough is what I am starting to realize. Sliding into spot number seven is Selena Gomez. The Wizards of Waverly Place star left her Disney days behind and had no problem explaining to her fans why. It was a pretty simple explanation and was the classic case of feeling the pressure to live up to that innocent Disney image. She told the New York Times, I was being held to this expectation of being the good girl. I knew deep down that this wasn't what I wanted to do, being exhausted of forcing something that wasn't right. According to Refinery29, she decided to break away from Disney and actually signed a new contract with Interscope instead. At that point, she allegedly let go of her mother acting as her manager and also had split up with her then boyfriend, Justin Bieber. This was a very big moment in her career and that is when she released her album, Revival. Once the album was out, she admitted it was the first time that she could breathe and no longer felt like she had to maintain the Disney guidelines. No one really realized just how bad her time with Disney was and fans were shocked to hear her admit that it actually made her depressed and put her in a really low spot in her life. Rolling into number six is Dylan and Cole Sprouse. The twins took over the Disney Channel with their hit show The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and then The Sweet Life on Deck. From the outside looking in, it seemed like they had the world in their hands. 
But they suddenly left the Disney Network behind and fans were shocked to learn their show would not continue. The boys have opened up about what happened and said they tried to pitch a spin-off idea to the Disney team, but they shut it down. Dylan explained and said, when we had pitched our idea, it was kind of the situation where they had almost laughed in our faces. He then said Disney came back to them a year later with an idea that was essentially the same thing as their original pitch. That is when he said he and his brother Cole basically laughed in their face and walked out. That was the last meeting they ever had with Disney and despite having years long relationship with them, things ended up leaving on a very icy note. They have no problem warning others that Disney might steal your ideas. So keep them to yourself. <laughs> Halfway through our list at number five is Rowan Blanchard. She gained a massive fan base from her time on the newer Disney show, Girl Meets World. Fans were crushed when the series was canceled after their ratings dropped. Forbes reported that the show lost around 3.6 million viewers between season one and season three. But the one thing that people always loved was Rowan and the fact that she prompted the idea of intersectional feminism. Despite her young age, she rallied for the Me Too movement and openly discussed her sexuality. She made a conscious decision back in 2017 to part ways with Disney following the cancellation of the show. She did an interview with W Magazine and said she left because she felt controlled by them. But she didn't exactly say the name Disney Network, probably to protect herself, but people could piece it together. She said, I worked for a corporation for four years that is known for silencing and crafting your voice. So with that, I just had to very much stand my ground and separate myself, which I think I did. She now says that she loves that she's not recognized anymore for her Disney character, but she's now recognized for her activism. In spot number four is Raven Simone. Fans were devastated when Raven left Disney for a while after her TV series That's So Raven became a massive success. But she shocked everyone when she signed on to do a spin-off of the original show called Raven's Home at 33 years old. Fans really didn't believe that she would work with Disney ever again, thinking that there was bad blood between them, but turns out there wasn't. Kind of. She did admit to feeling the pressure of having to try and fit the mold of Raven from the show and not who she was in real life, which is also Raven. When she came out in 2016, she revealed that Disney was always very accepting of her and her sexuality, but that people involved in the network weren't. She explained that during the last season of That's So Raven, she wore jeans and a vest and tie, and one of the members went up to her mom and said, she looks too much like a lesbian. Can you tell her to put on a skirt and makeup? Because then they'll accept her and come to her concert. As we know from other examples on this list, fitting the Disney look can add a lot of pressure to someone, especially someone who felt like they couldn't really express who they really were. Luckily, Disney has been more supportive and inclusive with the LGBTQ community since her original show. Taking over number three, we have Shia LaBeouf. If you followed his career, you would see that he is definitely one to experiment with new projects and avenues. But there was a route he refused to go down when he was working with Disney on the classic show, Even Stevens. He did an interview with MTV and said that he stopped working with Disney because they were very controlling over where his career was headed. Turns out they wanted him to start a music career. When looking at Disney, most of their stars started out with acting and then went into singing as their career grew. Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, Hilary Duff, to name a few. Even Raven Simone. During his interview with MTV, he said, I never came out with a music thing, even though Disney will push you that way. He went on to say that he always felt out of place at Disney and never felt like he truly belonged. Can you guys just imagine like Shia LaBeouf as a singer? <laughs> oh, what a world. Taking over the number two spot is Demi Lovato. The singer has always been open about her struggles with mental illness and addiction, but that was not always the case. She wasn't very transparent back in her Disney days when she starred on Sunny with a Chance and Camp Rock. In more recent interviews, she has revealed that she struggled with bulimia after getting bullied for her weight while working on Disney. She said she was performing concerts on an empty stomach and started self-medicating for her depression. The pressures of her Disney career quickly caught up to her, which might be why she was so angry in 2012 when Disney Channel made a joke in one of their scripts about eating disorders. Demi lashed out at them on Twitter and tweeted, I find it really funny how a company can lose one of their actresses from the pressures of an eating disorder and yet still make jokes about that very disease. They responded immediately and said that they were removing both episodes that included the jokes and said it was never their intention to make light of eating disorders. 
In our number one spot is Bella Thorne. This story of Bella has become famous ever since she shared it with her fans. She found fame as a young child on the Disney TV series Shake It Up, but it was cancelled in 2013 despite being the number one series in two demographics. People thought she was going to stay with Disney and move on to her next project, but it seemed like she was fed up with taking orders from them. After leaving the network, Bella revealed that one time they threatened to fire her after she posted a photo of herself wearing a black bikini. They ended up telling her mom that they cannot afford to fire her at that point, but if she does anything like that again, they will. The worst part about the whole thing was that Bella's mom was the one who bought her that bikini. Once this story came to service, Bella opened up more about her Disney experience and said she was forced to talk with a higher voice so that she would appeal to Disney's demographic. Even off the show, like during interviews and press, she was asked to change her tone. For anyone who does not follow Bella, she naturally has a deeper voice. Long story short, Bella stopped tolerating the demands and went on to pursue a very different career. She's now acting full time, putting out music, and is also running an OnlyFans company. No why. All right guys, that is our list. Make sure you guys leave a like if you enjoyed it. But for now, I'm gonna end this video with comments from celebrities who have drastically changed their looks part four. Casper41291 says, being tall, I know the feeling. I'm 6'3 and my bed had to be especially made so it could be long enough. Wow, you are very tall. I actually have a friend who is like over 6'5 and I'm not even kidding. Jane Jones says, wow, Calvin Harris is a glow up for sure. Yes, he is and I did not realize it till more recently. He looks good. The Indian guy says, why are people comparing Joss to Kendall Jenner, Jesus Christ above? <laughs> Dude, I got no idea. There truly is no comparison, so do not feel that I compare myself to Kendall Jenner. Iqbal Sibia says, you can deny, but surgery speaks for itself. It's a fact. People will still deny plastic surgery even when it appears very obvious. All right, guys, that's all I got. Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss our next video. I was your host, Joss. I will see you next time. No. Yeah, no. Ah! Fuck off! Oh no! <sighs> this struggle. Okay, don't touch it. Starting off our countdown is. Mm. I literally was about to say starting off our countdown is number ten. Sure. Imagine that. I have razor burn. No. <laughs> I'm like, do men not get razor burn on their face when they shave? Every day, though. Oh, because any, like, couldn't see stubble. He had to play like a 13 year old. The boys have a. <clears throat> I'm just gonna let it keep going a little bit because it's low.